85 Degrees Celsius Bakery and Cafe has been called the Starbucks of Taiwan, and people go crazy over it. It's hella moist, like hella moist. It has more than 1,000 locations around the world, and every time a new one opens, lines can get as long as four hours with people looking to grab some Taiwanese snacks. The bakery serves treats like egg tarts, sweet bread, taro cakes, and cheesy hot dog buns alongside everyone's favorite boba tea. 85 Degrees took off during the boba tea craze, and now it's a bona fide Taiwanese phenomenon. I've heard a lot about it, but I've never been. So I invited fans Hudson Yang from ABC's Fresh Off the Boat and his father Jeff to show me the ropes at the 85 Degrees in Torrance, California, a significantly Asian suburb outside of LA. He's strategizing over what to eat first. It's just like... <laughs> What's your favorite? Let's start with that. Egg tarts are like, everyone loves them. They're really flaky. It's like an egg custard in the middle? Yeah. Right. Mm. 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 It's a good version of an egg tart. You see oh, this totally. everywhere. Yeah. But these are super light. You can eat 20 of them. And I think Hudson may, may have at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Hudson, when did, when did you first try one of these? I mean, was it at home? Was it out? This was back in New York. I don't even know it was on four or five. I grew up with that stuff. So I, I know the stuff very well. And so well, I love it. <laughs> like I grew up in Knoxville, Tennessee, where there really were not a ton of uh, Chinese people. Uh, my parents are immigrants. So what did you guys do when you needed your fix of Chinese food? Is, was there anywhere to go? <laughs> so we would drive to Atlanta like six hours or whatever to pick up, go to the grocery stores there to get stuff that we need. And there was like one authentic Chinese restaurant that we would go to. Um, we're going and then we entered one of Chinese American places like buffets and stuff. Oh, yeah. Just as not even to as much to eat, but just a place to gather and hang out. There may be sort of nominal disdain for Chinese American cuisine, but if you don't have a church around, then you gather around the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like the yeah. uh, the social gathering hall for for Chinese folk. I mean, he's lucky because he's never lived or spent large amounts of time anywhere where there wasn't Chinese food. I within, mean, the like, Chinese food everywhere distance. nowadays. <laughs> yeah, it really is. You can go with, like the middle of Mexico, and there'll be Chinese food. Since being on the show, have you felt the need to learn more about Taiwanese culture? I mean, honestly, um, before the show, I did know a lot about it. Sometimes there are foods that I do need to learn about that I find on the show. I did learn how they always use every single part of the- Of the, the chicken the, or the-, the animals. <laughs> yeah, I saw that episode, I liked it. <laughs> There's not a single part of the, the chicken that I feel like Taiwanese not use in some fashion. Maybe yeah. the, feathers. the feathers and the beak, that's about it. <laughs> oh yeah, boba tea is like... <laughs> also super Taiwanese. Like, but everybody Taiwan. has it now. I got mine with uh, lychee and mango jelly and boba. And then... Taiwanese have this fascination with textures. That's why you have so many more sort of glutinous and creamy and crunchy things all happening in the same bites. The idea of boba tea, of putting actual food in your drink, if you will, you know, sort of sub substantial things you have to chew and swallow while you're drinking. That's something that, that came out of Taiwanese culture really, really easily. Next up, let's go to the uh, marble taro. It actually has a fairly subtle flavor, and that's the kind of thing that Taiwanese tend to reflexively inject into anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not super sweet. It's really creamy, the very mm -hmm. starchy from like a root vegetable is in there. So much for my paleo diet. No, <laughs> <laughs> no this is not paleo. No. Why do you end up coming here in particular? Why, do, why is this better? They actually do some very authentic stuff, but they also do some twists on uh, the authentic Taiwanese uh, versions of the food. Yeah, so for instance, this here, this pineapple bread, it's, a, it's an incredibly Taiwanese thing. And it's called pineapple bread because it looks like a pineapple. There's no pineapple flavor in it. In addition to having the sort of standard uh, bolo pao or pineapple bread, they also have things like pineapple bread danishes and uh, croissants and so on and so forth. So they- she's inspired by the yeah, flavors exactly. that you would find in a traditional Taiwanese bakery. Thank you so much for bringing me to 85 Degrees. This was such a treat. Thank you for free food. <laughs> <laughs> if you like this episode, click here to watch more cult following.